So, we have uh, discussed uh, silicon based FETs uh, including the metal source drain structures and SOA structures fin fit and all that. Now, we take a look at the non silicon materials like germanium compound semiconductors and see how what is the status of that, what were the problems faced by uh, everyone and how most of it has been sorted out we will see. The question immediately comes why do we need to take, take a look at other materials other than silicon. We have already seen when we while discussing the MOSFET that ID sat, drain saturation current is channel width, C oxide per unit uh, area, VGS minus V threshold into injection velocity. When you go to nano scale, ultimately, ultimately the limiting factor is this smaller W, then uh, channel length smaller, this is the limiting factor. So, if you want to have higher drain current which is required for driving the capacitive loads which are present in integrated circuits, you need to have of course, you increase the C oxide by reducing the thickness of the oxide, but there is a limit to that and you switch out high k dielectric to overcome that limit. Now, injection velocity we saw that it depends upon thermal velocity and low field mobility and electric field at the source end of the junction transition source end of the channel 0 plus. So, mobility is the one which if you keep it as high as possible you will have injection velocity equal to thermal velocity you can have ballistic transport practically. So, the entire aim is to improve the injection velocity by increasing the mobility. We have seen how to do that by re reducing the doping and by using SOI etcetera. Now, if you go over to the material which basically has a higher mobility that is the alternate way. So, that is why one takes a look into other materials. What are the other materials? Silicon all pervasive, it is the one which is ruling the VLSI technology today because of its uh, availability as you hear often it is the second best available material on the surface of that crust. Okay. So, that is available. So, that is the cheapest material for suitable. It is very good semiconducting material with band gap 1.1, low intrinsic area concentration and melting point is 1410 degree centigrade. So, you can use it for implantation annealing etcetera at temperature like 900,000 or even 1500. Those merits have uh, made people take a look at more and more into silicon, okay. but now when the limit you were hitting towards the limit somewhere around 1980s people started looking at other material like which can give as good performance as 0.1 micron silicon by changing over the material like gallium arsenide. Gallium arsenide can give as good performance as silicon having 1.1 micron and the gallium arsenide channel length is 0.5 microns or of that order. So, with we do not have to go down in technology they thought we can choose gallium arsenide. Merit band gap is higher than that of silicon very good because of that intrinsic area concentration very low. You can go to higher band gap means you can even use it for higher temperatures. So, that means for higher powers high speed because of the high electron mobility all those things are there. So, everything is meritorious, two problems were encountered there. N channel MOSFET if you want to make fantastic, mobility about 6 times that of electron mobility in silicon, but whole mobility even less than that of silicon. If I want to go to CMOS FET, gallium arsenide is not the material because whole mobility is low, but still if you are depending upon N channel devices like uh, uh, you know heterojunction bipolar transistors or uh, high electron mobility transistors using electron you can go in for that. People are still looking into that that way. Now, MOSFET with gallium arsenide there are a lot of effort spent on gallium arsenide during 1980s even 
going into 1990s because it does not have any good native oxide. See the best thing that happened to silicon is it band gap is good, you can go to 100, 125 degree centigrade, it has native oxide, thermally oxidize it, you can get excellent oxide which is chemically stable means what is meaning of chemically stable? It does not get attacked by most of the chemicals okay, except HF. We can put it in aqua regia, HCl, HNO3, nothing happens. Gallium arsenide uh, native oxide is not so stable. Plus, it will have gallium oxide and arsenic oxide. Between the two, you can it is a compound semiconductor. Vapor pressure of gallium is different from that of arsenic. Arsenic has got high vapor pressure. Even though melting point is quite good, 1, 2, 3, 8, less than silicon, but it is quite good. But if you go to higher temperatures, you lose arsenic because arsenic vapor pressure is high compared to the gallium vapor pressure. Okay. So, that was probably the gallium arsenide material itself and oxide, arsenic trioxide vapor pressure is 1 atmosphere even at 400 degree centigrade. So, if you heat it to 400 degree centigrade, you lose all that arsenic trioxide. So, it will be gallium trioxide which is not a good oxide. So, this was the problem that was faced there. So, what they thought was uh, what was tried out is one thing is in the absence of native oxide you have got surface passivation problems, tangling bonds, high interface state density. So, passivation problems were there. <coughs> we will come back to this later. So, passivation problem is one thing. Dielectric, what will you use dielectric? Deposited dielectrics, high k dielectrics you can use. So, now you can see that high k dielectric technology and passivation etcetera was growing with gallium arsenide. Simultaneously, the silicon people came back thinking if I cannot go to thin oxide like 1 nanometer or below, why not I go to high k dielectric? See, after all, the capacitance per unit area is epsilon oxide divided by T oxide. Now, I am able not able to reduce the T oxide to increase the capacitance, but I can increase the epsilon oxide by using high k. That was the idea. So, it is sort of borrowed from here when people are struggling with gallium arsenide, silicon uh, technology people had because they have invested so much money on that, they came back with the idea that is go to high k dielectric. Okay. Now, so lot of effort has gone in gallium arsenide work, at least hemmed HBT, etcetera, has happened. MOSFET not much success because not because of the MOSFET, because CMOS cannot be done. CMOS integrate. Uh, I see you cannot have in the case of gallium arsenide. Now, at this stage, the mobility electron mobility is higher here, hole mobility is low. At this point, thought came back to the original material on which the transistor was invented, germanium. 1947, when the transistor was invented, invented by Shockley, Bardin, and Bratin, that was germanium. And the effort was towards making MOSFET with germanium. But while doing that effort on MOSFET fabrication of germanium, accidentally they landed up in bipolar transistor. I will not go into the history of that, but that is the history. Okay. So, the original devices were all bipolar BJTs were germanium. 1950s, 1960s, if you look at the industries all the germanium transistor BJTs were there, MOSFET was not there really. Only when the MOSFET came up in silicon, germanium, germanium was uh, thrown away because it does not have a native oxide. You may ask does it not have native oxide? Yes, germanium dioxide is there, but germanium dioxide is very unstable, it can even get washed away with water. Okay. Chemically unstable, heat it to about 500, 600 degree centigrade, you lose germanium oxide, it gets converted to germanium GeO2 becomes GeO, okay. all that we will see and lot of defects, defect states create in the interface as well as in the oxide. So, native oxide out of question. So, now borrow from silicon, silicon also you are not using native oxide, you are using deposited oxide. Why not use deposited oxide? Germanium. So, here again you have the similar problem that you had with gallium arsenide. Surface preparation, surface states to be satisfied, surface passivation and also deposited dielectrics. What dielectric will you use? 
what technique you use for preparation. Those were the things that were that are to be dealt with in germanium. Now, let us take a uh, look at the germanium by itself. Band gap is low, bad news. Okay, that was one of the reasons why germanium got uh, to the back backyard. So, 0.66 electron volts. Okay, that limits its temperature of operation to high temperatures. So, if you are not worried about that, we may still choose that. But if you can increase the band gap by somehow by germanium, by quantization, you overcome that problem. In fact, band gap can be increased if you use very very thin layers of material. Energy band gap can increase. So, that can go up. Now, other problem one think, thinks of is melting point 934. If you reduce all your processing temperature to 500, 600 degrees centigrade, you do not have to worry about that. Okay? In a way, germanium has got tremendous advantages to use uh, metal semiconductor, metal gate uh, MOSFET. When you use metal gate, you are not doing that n plus poly doping etcetera and high temperature process is not there. Metal gate can be done at low temperature. Source drain you can use as metal semiconductor, uh, metal source drain contact, short key. But again, you have to look into the problems uh, which are there for creating the ohmic low barrier height contacts. P channel MOSFET with the germanium therefore is not an issue because platinum sulfide makes very low barrier with this germanium. So, P channel can be made. And we also seen if you do passivation with sulfur, you can reduce the barrier height for electrons also. So, both N channel P channel can be done with germanium. What about mobility? 3900 centimeter square per volt second electrons almost three times that of silicon may not be as good as gallium arsenide, but it is not a compound semiconductor it is elemental semiconductor you have to deal with only one element in gallium arsenide you have to deal with both gallium and arsenic. So, that way electron mobility is quite good look at the whole mobility 450 silicon 400 gallium arsenide for whole mobility centimeter square per volt second 1000 almost almost four times that of silicon. So, that is the key thing this is what attracted germanium that is what germanium has come back in this millennium. Okay. It has come back because of its high mobility and ability to make ohmic contacts or the low barrier height contacts to the channel ability to deposit uh, high k dielectrics ability to passivate probably those are the things key issues to be seen. Okay. So, intrinsic array concentration is high you can see that if you make a junction junctions will have leakage unless you are able to increase the band gap. Now, once you have low band gap like uh, 0.66 electron volts, the cutoff wavelength for optics, uh, optical absorption is 1.89 microns. 1.24 divided, this E is H nu, Elect energy is H into nu, and nu is velocity by lambda. So, substitute all that you get the cutoff wavelength, that is, if the wavelength is uh, shorter than that, energy is greater than 0.66 electron volts. So, if wavelength is length less than 1.8 micron micrometer all will be absorbed. Today, if you look at the infrared detectors, they are all germanium. Well, you can see very long wavelengths can be absorbed by that. Germanium detectors are used because of that. Silicon cutoff wavelength will 1.24 by 1.1, that is about 1.1 electron uh, micrometer. So, beyond 1.1 micrometer it, it would not absorb. Okay. Gallium arsenide cutoff wavelength is 1.24 by 0.8. 1.43 that is about 0.8 micrometer. So, no not suitable for those wavelengths. So, optical you can have optical devices if you want to have along with the germanium, germanium is very good because it broadens the absorption wavelength of the spectrum better optonic uh, for auto electronic integration. This is looking at the plus side of germanium. Challenges germanium melting point lower than lower 934 
degree centigrade. Therefore, metal gate electrodes are used for germanium MOSFET that is not an issue. Conventional poly gate electrodes need high temperature and dope point activation we do not need to do that for germanium we are using metal gate. Problem water soluble germanium dioxide typically present in upper surface of germanium containing material causes gate gas uh, direct instability chemically not stable. So, any chemical processing you do it goes off. It is essential to have a surface which is free from germanium oxide because that creates lot of defects. Okay. Stoichiometric is germanium dioxide that is unstable. So, if it gets converted to germanium oxide by reaction with germanium. So, you will have germanium oxide there. So, it is it is required to remove that always that is a problem on that look into you can use high k dielectric no doubt there is no native oxide that is if there is no native oxide go to high k dielectric surface preparation. Most challenging thing is germanium surface preparation and interface control same as what you had with gallium arsenide same as what you have with the silicon high k dielectric, but there at least you can say I can go a very very thin layer of uh, native oxide I can satisfy that and then I put the high k dielectric in silicon you cannot do that in germanium and uh, gallium arsenide. This is just to show this one of those paper oldest papers which I saw thickness if I have germanium dioxide okay, deposited on that by sputtering technique and if I anneal it at 600 degree centigrade in nitrogen forget about uh, uh, solubility not water if you anneal it the thickness comes down. Germanium dioxide reacts with germ germanium to re release germanium oxide. So, the germanium oxide okay, is volatile it comes through a germanium dioxide. So, you see that the thickness of this germanium dioxide keeps on reducing indicating that it has got converted to germanium oxide which has been lost and when that happens the presence of germanium dioxide and very highly defective germanium dioxide present there presence of along with presence of germanium oxide gives rise to very high values of interface state density. So, what people have concluded is no good to have germanium dioxide remove that completely exactly same conditions was arrived at in gallium arsenide no good to have native oxide remove that native oxide completely before you do any chemical treatment. So, that is the problem of the interface. Now, leakage if the band gap is low if you make a channel if you make a MOSFET with the silicon you saw when you make a, you dope the channel heavily. Okay. Forget think do not uh, you are not going for a soy etcetera you make that heavy dope channel. So, that means the drain is n plus channel is also heavily doped. So, the energy band diagram between the channel region and the drain region will be like this this is the p type region plus here minus here energy band diagram bends here look at this diagram you may say I have got 0.66 electron volts of the energy band gap, but when it bends it bends parallelly the gap between the conduction band and valence band if you go vertically is 0.66, but since this barrier width is very small if you go from here to here that width is very small. So, you may have vertical band gap 0.66 electron volts, but horizontally that thickness is very small. So, it, the distance between the valence band and the conduction band here will be very small there are enough states available in the conduction band of n type material there are enough electrons available in the valence band they can tunnel through that. So, when you apply reverse bias of the order of about 10 to the power 6 volts per centimeter which very easily can reach in the drain voltage of couple of volts when the doping levels are that high 
you will have tunneling here. So, from that point of view silicon do not have that much of problem because band gap is wider. So, this gap between these two is not as low as in silicon. So, inability to operate at temperatures higher is one problem higher than 75 degree centigrade because band gap is low junction leakage band to band tunneling B T B T you will hear the jargon used B T B T problem <laughs> that is band to band tunneling problem but balance band to conduction band tunneling problem. So, that is there. So, that is uh, present here all these lead to high J band to band is which is proportional to there is a formula for this it is inversely proportional to e, e, e g square root less the band gap more will be the current less the band gap that gap is reduced. Okay. This is what is one of the problems that is encountered then large leak current due to band V T V T can overcome the can be overcome by the quantization effects in ultra thin film diffuse that is the solution. So, the band gap increases and the band to band tunneling B T B T B T goes down. Okay. This general physics you know that if you reduce the thickness there will be transfer of carriers from one valley to other valley and the band gap becomes higher. So, you would not be having that problem instead of 0.66 if it goes even to 0.7 okay, you have uh, overcome the problem because it is root of E g. So, this is one of the results which was uh, reported in the Stanford University thesis way back in 2007. This we got through Professor Saraswath uh, okay, who had uh, come over here who gave a talk he was this is his slide. So, to say okay, where if you make gallium arsenide thickness very very thin you have the band gap we have the IT B T B T current gets reduced drastically. Same with germanium if you make thinner and thinner from 10 nanometer to about 2 na 3 nanometer if you go down whatever current which was about 10 to power minus 4 amperes per micrometer width of the channel goes down to about 10 to power minus 8 several orders of magnitude it can be reduced because band gap is E g is reduced. Okay. So, this is what uh, makes it this is a favorable condition for germanium that means, if you have to if you want to use germanium better use it in very thin films. So, it is better suited for things devices like SOI, but you cannot call it as SOI it is no longer silicon on insulator what is it then GOI germanium on insulator. Okay. It may not be oxides on insulator. So, people talk of GOI there. So, such devices are the ones which are you get a pointer to do in this application of germanium. So, with all the positive attitude one has moved forward take a look at what happens now. So, positive things are all there if you suitable the handle to take care of the interface state density and also take care of improving the band gap okay. challenges related to the, the surface state density. If you take the free surface of gallium arsenide this is the conduction band and this is the valence band E v and E c gap is 0 0.66 electron volts okay. and the neutral level is somewhere here I, I given as 0 0.09 or so uh, just some place of the round off saying 0 0.1 0 0.1 electron volts is neutral level. Suppose the doping in the if it is a p type material and if the doping is adjusted such that the Fermi level is coinciding with this level actually one can calculate and show that if the doping is 10 to the power of 17 acceptors in germanium the Fermi level is coincide with the neutral level this is a neutral level charge neutrality level C n l is charge neutrality level. See they used to call it as neutral level earlier I have been using that terminology. Now, people call it C n l okay. do not have time to say neutral level C n l charge neutrality level. Okay. So, if it matches with that you know that the uh, charge uh, formula will coincide with that net charge is 0 all the acceptors are not occupied charge is 0 all the donors in surface are occupied charge is 0. Now, what is plotted here C 
is the except our densities that is starting from conduction bandage that is the way the density of state C is d i t high near the conduction band lower lower somewhere it is lower and it is becoming practically 0 because it is compensated by these dotted lines here they are the donors. So, normally we assume in the analysis d i t is same all through the magnitude is same 10 to power 12, 10 to power 12, 10 to power 12. This may be 10 to power 14, 10 to power 13, 10 to power of 5 times 10 to power 12, 10 to power 12, 5 times 10 to power 12, very small. Same way, donors 10 to power 13, 12, 11, like that. So, it is varying across the band gap. In silicon, also, it is like that. You usually plot a some U shaped density of distribution. It is not really you, it will be some arbitrary shape like this, minimum barrier. But it is true that at the neutral level, both of them cancel each other at 0. Okay? They match the both that acceptors. So, this is the situation, I will go back to this afterward. This is if you have, we will see this later on. This is actually one of those papers which uh, very famous paper for German MB also gave the uh, short key barrier height in that in the previous uh, when we discussed short key barrier and showed that neutral level is somewhere there 2006. Because once Germany became popular people started looking into that. Okay. So, we have seen that if the roping level is 10 to 17 charge density is 0. So, if I take a p type semiconductor and do not apply any voltage to the gate Fermi level is there. If I apply plus, plus voltage to minus voltage to the gate accumulation that is almost there itself. So, capacitance in the accumulation region will not be affected by the interface state. Because there are no interface states, they are all neutral. If your Fermi level is coinciding, if it is doping is 10 to the 17, but if the doping is other than that, supposing if the doping is uh, uh, higher, then you will have some acceptors coming into picture here. Okay? And if the doping is lower, you will have the other effects. We will just take this, let us say you have a material like that, you have no problem in accumulation, but what happens? See, I just put V D C plus V A C, where the way you measure the capacitance is bias it with a particular D C, superimpose A C, you measure the current actually, the A C current. Okay. That is how you measure the capacitance. At a given bias, how much is the AC current that is flowing through the thing? That is the idea. So, you sweep the DC and measure that AC current flowing through that. I sweep it very slowly that the, the semiconductor has enough time to come into equilibrium with the volt applied voltage. So, you sweep it very slowly. If you sweep very fast, you will see the thing results will be different. Okay. So, this is accumulation. Now, if I apply plus voltage to that, ideally what will you, what would, if the interface state density were 0, you would have got it like that. Capacitance, it will deplete, it will invert and you have got this high frequency capacitance like that. But, the moment you apply plus voltage, go from 0 to plus voltage, V g is V d plus V a c, a c is for measurement. What happens to that? plus will begin to deplete. The moment it de, uh, depletes, you can see in the bulk, Fermi level is still aligned with respect to neutral level. It is distance between the uh, Fermi level and the valence band, the energy distance is same, the neutral region, but in the surface it has got depleted. Fermi level is flat. If it has depleted, it has become less p type. That means, the the energy distance between the Fermi level and the balance band has increased. So, energy band has bent down here. Now, the neutral level is described with respect to the balance bandage. So, on the here it is ok the bulk, but on the surface the neutral level is a 0.1 electrons above the balance band. So, all the donor levels are occupied there is no problem, but because the Fermi level is above the neutral level here now in the surface, all these levels are exposed. That is, 
these except are levels are below the Fermi levels. That means, as the energy band diagram bends keeps on bending, when you increase the plus voltage, more and more acceptors uh, get uh, you know they are below the valence band, more and more electrons occupy in this acceptor level. So, all the levels here will be occupied by electrons and they are taken from the either from the depletion layer partly, partly from the plus voltage that you apply. Combined effect is the plus voltage that you apply to the gate has got two types of negative charges, one coming from depletion layer, other one coming from the interface state. So, if the interface states were not there for a given voltage, let us say I am here, for a given voltage, the depletion layer bit would have been let us say W naught and you would have got a particular capacitance. Now, for the same gate voltage, because the band bending takes place, not only the negative charges are supplied from this depletion layer, negative charges are from supplied from the interface state also. So, the depletion layer with the let us say there are 100 electrons, electrons are required. In the absence of interface state density, all the 100 come from depletion layer. When the interface state density is there, let us say half of it comes from interface, half of it from depletion layer. That means, same 100 electrons are supplied by the combined effect of inter interface state and the depletion layer. So, less depletion layer width. Lesser depletion layer width is sufficient because part of the charge comes from the interface state. That means, capacitance will be higher. So, for the same voltage plus 100 charges are at the gate, I am just giving an example 50 from interface, 50 from depletion layer. So, depletion layer width usually you require 100, all the 100 will come from depletion layer. Now, depletion layer is required to supply only half of it. So, depletion layer width will be half of that. If the depletion layer width is half of that, capacitance will be higher. So, the capacitance does not go down all the way down, you, you will not have inversion, but you will have flat region here. You will not have inversion okay, if the interface state densities are able to respond to high frequencies. Usually, those interface state densities may not respond to low frequencies, but they will respond to high frequencies. So, what happens now is whatever capacitance is there after that depletion layer bit widens sufficient amount of charge comes from the inter inter interface state density because that is high. So, almost everything the, the there is no more widening of depletion layer width. So, the capacitance will be C oxide in series is the depletion layer width which was which has occurred at this point it is not immersed inverted yet for inverting the voltage drop must be equal to twice 5 it is not twice 5 there is no inversion layer, but it looks to you when you measure it at high frequency, it looks to you that capacitance has flattened. But if you take the C oxide by C inversion, you can get the depletion layer width from there, you will see that the depletion layer, layer width is much smaller than the corresponding to 25. Okay? So, one of the indications of uh, high interface rate density is this thing. Now, if you keep changing the frequency, you will have the frequency dependence of the capacitance will come into picture. Okay. So, this is called pseudo inversion, that is pseudo inversion. It looks as if that it is inverted because it is saturating, but there is no inversion. So, you make a MOSFET with that, what will happen? nothing no current all that when you change the gate voltage with the fellow which responds is the interface state channel there is no charge ok. So, MOSFET will not work ok. This is exactly the similar thing that chocolate etcetera observed when I tried to make MOSFET on germanium by depositing oxide. No, they did not deposit oxide they put a mica sheet on germanium ok. They did not have time to uh, or patience to see uh, how to go about let us put a dialectic on the top of that put a metal apply voltage see whether the capacitance changes nothing. Okay. 
put a contact on source and drain, no current. That time at which they came up with the theory of interface states, Bardeen, who was the group member, came up with the theory for which he got the Nobel Prize, along with the uh, Bardeen Bradley. Bardeen, of course, got another Nobel Prize later on in 1960 for high TC superconductor, high temperature superconductor. Okay. He was one of those persons who got two Nobel Prizes. Right. So, this is the problem. So, you are unless you remove the interface state densities, you have no chance with n channel MOSFET. Let us see whether you have chance for p channel MOSFET. We are, we are looking for p channel devices because you have got very low barrier heat there. Take n type semiconductor. If it is troubling your p channel, it will n channel it will your p channel also, p channel MOSFET. Substrate will be n type. Okay. What will happen? So, look at that here. Fermi level is much above that. So, this is the neutral level 0.1 electron volt above the balance band. I have shown it magnified. These are all the acceptors. So, all these acceptors above the neutral level, which are below the Fermi level, are occupied by electrons. That means, if it is n type, that is taken, this is free surface, no metal there they are taken away from this semiconductor donors. So, there is a depletion there. Now, the interface state density can be so high 10 to the 13 of that order, then what will happen? Band bending will be so much that it will be inverted already. So, even before putting the metal it is inverted. You grow put some high k dielectric there nothing happens interface states are there. Put a metal on the thing it is inverted even at 0 bias it is inverted. See ideally you would get this characteristic for PMOS plus voltage accumulation negative voltage depletion and inversion. So, even without applying you will have because of the dip, too much of depletion it will be inverted. People have observed this thing. So, if I have to come out of depletion and go to accumulation what will you have to do? Apply large plus voltage all those minus charges which are there it can, can be taken care of by applying plus voltage. So, that charges or this depletion layer it comes out of depletion layer. Okay. So, plus apply, apply you will have the uh, you know now what happens free surface plus charges that is electrons come from here. Now, you divert that electric entire field lines from this direction to that direction. See, see electrons have got donated here leaving behind plus charges. So, electric field is plus minus in that direction. I put an oxide and apply plus charge there plus voltage to the gate plus minus will come here. So, these donors which are donated electrons they do not have to donate it comes plus charge comes from the gate. So, depletion it comes out of depletion you can there is a chance for you to go to accumulation till you may not get actual accumulation that will again give you pseudo accumulation. That is you will not be able to come out completely through the depletion layer. These are in fact those who worked on Galilei Mars 9 had uh, seen exactly similar effects are seen, it, seen in germanium. Okay. N type germanium EF is located at the upper half of the band gap Q A T is negative. And large okay. channel will be inverted even at Vg equal to 0. Germanium P channel MOSFET will not turn off unless Vdc is made positive. Even there, the capacitance is lower indicates what? It is not true accumulation, there is still some depletion layer. See, when you apply a plus voltage to a gate, what happens here is it is able to bring it out of inversion, but it is not still able to bring it into accumulation. So, you there will be oxide in series with the depletion layer. So, you will have that capacitance there lower than that of you have turned off the device all right, but you do not get the oxide capacitance. This again will be frequency dependent. Okay. Now, let us take a look at what are the things that you can do. People have played games. Okay, enjoyed making various types of things. 
first thing is a what gate, gate dielectric will use not g uh, not uh, g o. So, they thought let us see I will just go through quickly about what we will have tried because that is interesting. In fact, when you go through that sometimes you also see there is something available for you to think as a thought process when you want to do some research that is why I am going through that. Germanium oxynitride they found that is a good dielectric. Okay. High quality germanium oxynitride can be found on germanium by nitridation of thermally grown germanium oxide. Grow germanium oxide, how do nitridation do? What you do is rapid thermal oxidation, oxidize germanium, do not allow that to evaporate, do not allow that to react with germanium 500 600 degree centigrade in few seconds, rapid thermal processing oxidation, followed by that rapid thermal nitridation. So, you must have a system where you can have oxygen and also ammonia. Pass ammonia through that 660 degree centigrade, you have got gallium oxide, then gallium oxynitride O x and y that is quite stable. High quality thin gallium oxynitride serves as stable interlayer for integration of novel high k dielectric. You can do that put high k dielectrics there that is what uh, was the thought. So, what is high k dielectric that you can use? So, you not only not what want to have ga, uh, that interface with gallium oxynitride, follow it up with high k dielectric. Same thing that you use for silicon, hafnium oxide okay, or any other oxide, lanthanum, yttrium, all those things, but hafnium oxide, zirconium oxide, they are the ones people have been using. Mostly you will see that for high k dielectric used for germanium also is hafnium oxide. One thing people have got their hands on with the silicon high k dielectric, they can do that. Okay. So, let us see how things have happened with the ammonium uh, with the gallium oxynitride and high k dielectric. But there is one more thing that people want to think of. Let us say without that, can you do without that germanium oxynitride, can you do a surface preparation and put hafnium oxide? There are two issues here. One is interface uh, passivation, other one is high k dielectric. Okay. How do you do? You use germanium, germanium oxynitride, then high k dielectric, or give some preparation that is essential to a surface free of all the germanium oxide before you put high k dielectric. Conventional solution is HF, that is not good enough in germanium. You can see that what they have done is in one of the approaches. Germanium oxide has been resorbed. See, what you want is do not don't want germanium oxide, germ GeO2. So, what they did was you know, this is to tell you how much work has gone into this in the past 10 years or 10 to 12 years. How the germanium native oxide is present, put it in a high vacuum, heat it, remove it, and then deposit high k dielectric. That is one approach to some degree of success with the uh, atomic layer deposition, they deposited the high k dielectric like hafnium oxide, uh, did not get much success, but partly I think, and also it uh, did not accept because of the uh, costs involved in all these things, people are looking at other alternatives, it did not really catch up with people. Okay. Practical solution is based on nitridation, wet etching you do do nitridation with the ammonia, then deposit high k dielectric. That is what I mentioned earlier, uh, RTP. So, now let us see how it is. So, these are the results. You can see how horrible the CV cap, CV is almost flat. CV characteristic of germanium, hafnium oxide, aluminum. One case germanium cleaned only with HF, just clean with HF. Other approach would be of course, put in the high vacuum, remove all the oxide etcetera remove the oxide, deposit hafnium oxide by whatever technique atomic layer deposition <coughs> okay, and then put aluminum C B is flat. That means, there is no uh, it is uh, still problematic. Other approach was germanium wet means H F treatment, wet treatment cleaned 
treated with one minute or with ammonia. So, one is only give a treatment then half the mock fat did not budge. Other approach is HF dip remove the oxide because you do not want the oxide then RTP rapid thermal processing at 650 degree centigrade with ammonia that whatever little oxide is there it gives germanium oxynitride then put the high uh, deposit hafnium oxide that gives some CV that is that means what we are telling is you have germanium uh, oxynitride by RTP then deposit hafnium oxide ok you get some at least response to the DC. I am sure that people had uh, overjoyed by seeing this, but there is lot of it still did not give the expected values of CV telling that still there are some problem issues in this they did not make MOSFET on this only CV you see most of the things are on CV, but MOSFET have been made now ok then what next sulphur people came up with sulphur passivation. So, here what is done is again you have to prepare the surface degrees all that uh, IPA and all those things done two approaches one approach A and B ok clean in first you clean with sulfuric acid H 2 O and then HFT that is supposed to give a clean surface like what you do in silicon, but sulfuric acid it will remove some surface also and then whatever little oxide there hopefully it has gone in HF. They did not do that oxid ox, uh, nitridation in one approach approach A after this wafer cleaning they immersed it in 50 percent ammonium sulphide 70 to 80 degree centigrade that is sulphur passivation which I discussed in the last presentation. Sulfur passivation, sulfur attaches on to germanium, it passivates those dangly mods, it at least shifts the neutral region. Okay. So, it is a passive end supposed to be. So, you do that in another approach with that RTP approach. So, you are comparing now one is that nitridation with ammonia, other one is with sulfur with the chemical treatment. Sulfur treatment that is very simple, do that chemical treatment, sulfur treatment, put the for the position with hafnium oxide. See, always high K they have to use hafnium oxide. So, they have got the C V with hysteresis and everything, but you got the this high frequency and low frequency. Low frequency also was had a hysteresis there, telling that there are still some interface state densities are there. They estimated the interface state density, one with sulfur, other one is ammonia. They found sulfur was better. There are different methods, methods used one is conductance method, other one is high frequency low frequency method. The sulphur passivated gave about 2.4 in 10 to power 12 centimeter square per electron volt that is the minimum that they got. Whereas, ammonia treated nitrated one gave slightly higher telling both of them are good or both of them are bad ok not good enough now came the interesting results at this point all these were only the C B and uh, this was in 2006 again at the time people are doing the chemical things. Then came in 2008 we are coming closer 2008 Stanford University Sarasot group they publish a paper excellent interface state density down to down to about uh, 10 to power of 11 or something like that ok. I have noted somewhere ah, here d a t 10 to power of 3 in 10 to power 11 ok. What they did was it is very interesting see what you have to worry is the native oxide was the one people were worrying, but the, what they have shown is native oxide by itself as G O 2 is ok. Do not allow that GO2 to react with germanium to release germanium oxide. If GO, GO2 and GO, the non stoichiometric GO is dangerous, 
that gives rise to high state interface state density that gives rise to defects in the G O 2. So, prevent heating it to high temperature okay. and when you do that oxidation of germanium you have to go to higher temperatures RTP you do still you are going to higher temperatures. There will be some incomplete oxidation. So, what they did this is a very novel idea ozone O 3 O 2 is oxygen ozone is O 3 I think it is available. <laughs> okay. They used ozone for oxidation. They did the oxidation as different temperatures okay, 200 degrees, 350, 400, 450, very short time. Okay. Uh, they did the oxidation and then okay, this ensures that relatively complete oxidation of germanium takes place you have got GO2. So, on the top of that germanium GO2 they deposited in one case low temperature oxide it is SiO2 CVD 130 degree centigrade low temperature oxide you can do. Okay. That is there is a process which with which you can do at 300 degree centigrade silicon dioxide not plasma it is a low temperature of low pressure plasma can damage the interface. So, they did that. So, on all these samples through which were done grown at 200, 350, 400, 450 they did low temperature oxide. Now, first they made the study with the low temperature oxide SiO 2 itself and they saw do it at 250 degrees and 200 degrees centigrade the DIT across the band gap from the valence bandage right up to the mid gap. Okay. Let me not worry about what method they have used, they are all the same. Okay. So, they got interface state density at the valence bandage always it is high, we have to worry about near the bit gap. That was uh, this is 10 to the 12, 1.5 times 10 to the 12 at mid gap at 200. That shows that the oxidation was not complete, they did that 350 degree centigrade, deposited the low temperature oxide SiO2 made the uh, then they put the uh, platinum as the metal gate that is the most CV. So, they got for to 350 degree centigrade that graph this is the one interface state density fell down drastically below 10 to 12 telling that oxidation is taking more oxidation is taking place it is the direction to go they went to 400 degree centigrade even down it went. Okay it went down to almost like 3 and 10 or 11. More ambitious 450 they went the interface state density went up. What could be the reason? The germanium dioxide started reacting with germanium releasing germanium oxide interface state density went up. So, as you went on increasing the oxidation temperature 200, 350, 400 it went on improving, but when it went to 450 the interface state density started going up. So, what they did was let us be stick to 400 degree centigrade that gives me the best interface. So, instead of depositing SiO2 atomic layer deposition at 130 degree centigrade this is a very slow process as you know you have seen it in our laboratory you can use some precursors layer by layer you can deposit aluminum and oxide aluminum oxide you can put uh, I am sorry half name and oxide it is not Al 2 3 can put, but half name oxide. Recently in 2012 they have reported the aluminum oxide also we will see that later. So, today we will just see half name oxide thing they deposit see then it is the further became better. Okay. So, that high gate electric we do not know what happened there interface state density went down further. So, this is the interface density mid gap close to the conduction band close to mid gap mid gap here this is close to 3 into 10 to power 11 mid gap is somewhere here 0 0.66 0 0.3 this is the mid gap here, but 450 was higher. So, conduction band is always you see balance band if you go closer it gets up as you see it is always like a U curve 
Okay, that is when you go towards the conduction band, the D A T goes up, valence bandage it goes up, but we have to worry what is in the middle because when you go to inversion etcetera, it is near that point. So, so long as you are able to reduce the middle interface state density lower value to reduce the interface state density around the mid gap, you are in business. So, conduction bandage they showed this that is high, but even that comes down quite a bit. Telling that almost over the entire band gap the interface state density has got reduced by this process when you do the oxidation at 400 degrees centigrade deposit by atomic layer deposition. In fact, the whole thing is because this process is even done at lower temperature this is done at 300 degrees centigrade absolutely no chance of reaction of gallium uh, dioxide with the silicon uh, germanium. So, you get excellent interface state density there right through the band conduction band to mid gap all the way it is very low. Okay. So, I will just go into one more uh, thing here this is uh, the one that uh, has been done in 2009 here they did not do that uh, the uh, ozone because they did not have the ozone. Okay. So, they did not do that this is the any national university of Singapore people from Chanford to Singapore we come back closer. Okay. So, what they did was H f treatment they did usual thermally grown 2 nanometer of oxide at 400 because they this that result from Stanford gave a clue that 400 seems to be all right, but it may not be full oxidation because you are not using ozone you get GO 2 2 nanometers that oxide you grow and then deposit 4.5 nanometer of hafnium oxide layer by atomic layer deposition same, but they did 300 degree centigrade using some other cursor. So, they did hafnium oxide deposition. Then after that see they did not use it as it is they used a metal tantalum nitride metal that is all immaterial that is the one that they have chosen from work function concentration etcetera. So, they did that metal deposition, okay, but before that they did some other treatment like fluorine. So, the key thing they did was I will not go through that today, I will take it up next lecture, but the key thing they did was they did the thermal oxidation and they did the hafnium oxide deposition okay, at 300 degree centigrade. They incorporated fluorine into interface by using in the CF4 plasma. Okay. That fluorine did some passivation of those dissatisfied uh, interface state and then they did the metallization, then they did the uh, forming gas annealing which gave some hydrogen. So, they got very good results. I will discuss that in my next presentation to sum up the key thing to do here is the interface state treatment proper and proper high k dielectric you can get uh, good uh, MOS capacitors here which are where the we can make the MOSFETs. That MOSFET aspects we will discuss with some more results of this type in the next presentation.